Intimidation. I think it's very difficult. Yeah. What he's saying is if you live in a, in a place where there are powerful hunts, um, there's an incredible amount of pressure on you to support them, right? Mm -hmm. And it will be cut. There's the carrot on one side, you know, you'll, you'll be a good guy if you support the hunters. On the other side, you'll be intimidating and your animals might get killed if you don't support them. Mm -hmm. And it's very heavy stuff. Well, I, I know because we have a lot of people who write to us about this kind of thing. I think it's gradual. I think you have to reinforce people's belief in that they are right and they are not alone. And gradually they can come out and, um, and support people like us who, who fight against the hunts. But it's a real problem, yeah. Uh, also, you know, some, some proper um, honest reporting in the papers would help. Conservatives against hunting, which is a great thing, you know, and it's very difficult to be a conservative against hunting, and these people are very brave. So we're um, offering our help to them, and we're very grateful that, that they're there, you know. So it's it's not really about politics. And if I if I did meet David Cameron, I, mean, I hope I do someday, you know, I will try and have a, a logical conversation with him. I'm sure the guy's not all bad, you know. In, in, the, in, in this area, I think he is bad. You know, I think it's a very very bad place to to be. Um, I met Nick Herbert, who was very much part of that um, clique, if you like, and everybody thought Nick Herbert was going to be the new head of DEFRA, but he didn't get that job, he's now head of police. And one of the things I would like to happen is for people to ask questions in the House as to are the laws on hunting being enforced or not? I mean, if they're not being enforced, why? You know, and I think that's, that's the spot we should be putting Nick Herbert on. Because if he says no, um, he really doesn't have a leg to stand on. We've got a law there. I mean, why would some laws be enforced and others not enforced? You know, if he says yes, then you have power from the top, which means that all these police forces who are a little bit kind of influenced and intimidated by the hunt, as you said, um, will have to take notice and will have to, to do the job properly. I don't think it's a bad law, the hunt law. I really don't. You know, and I think the fact that we saw Tony Blair. <coughs> Conservatives against hunting, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> We saw, I mean, Tony Blair in his book um, blew that idea apart because he, as soon as the law was in place, which he hadn't even had the courage to vote on, either way, he basically shot it in the foot by saying, oh, you know, don't bother to enforce it. Yet. So we know now why that law didn't work so well, not because it's not a good law, but because it wasn't properly enforced. We need it to be properly enforced. Right. I try and do my bit in the media. I probably didn't answer your question very well. What do I do? 
you know, I, I don't have that much influence with these people. And a lot of people, you know, their kids like Queen or, or their granddads like Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I get some doors open to me, but I, I'm not the person that they will listen to unless they think it's going to do them some good. You know, and and I I, the best thing you can do with any politician, even if they're the good ones, and I don't think there are that many good ones, um, you know, it, is to persuade them that what you're proposing to them is going to get them votes. You know, if you can say to them, look, 75% of your constituency in your party are against fox hunting, maybe you should be voting against fox hunting in, 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 in Parliament, and in that case, maybe you will get more votes. Now, that's when the penny starts to drop in their heads. So I try and do that. As regards to the media, sorry, you asked, I do bits and pieces um, when, when the opportunities arise. It's getting a little better, I think. You know, I was viewed as a, you know, you know, a rock star. What would a rock stars know? You know, that, that was their problem. But that's beginning to change a little bit in people. I could give more talks. Yes, I could do. Yeah. Well, I'll go to Eaton, shall I? <laughs> I think I've been invited to Eaton. <laughs> Brian Ferry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the hard, that's one of the hardest things for me, the fact that people in my business, you know, are on the other side. It, it's a very hard thing to, to deal with, you know, and I, I don't want to sort of start wars with them, because in some ways they've done so much good in the world, you know. It's, you know some of them have done great work for charities other than animal charities, you know, you can't start kind of slagging these people off. So it, it's, it's a difficult balance, and I try to be outspoken without being needlessly confrontational, I suppose, because you need to preserve your, keep your powder dry, <laughs> <laughs> to use a printing. No, it's a wartime <laughs> Please. Can I ask you Yeah. 
and you can do so much for us. And it's terrible for us to expect you to put your life on hold to some part and, and help us. But you obviously can. And the media will take, um, will take you. You could ask Cameron to meet you on the television in an open line thing on the Thank you. 